Hey guys, how's it going? Me and Liam are here are ready to do a Walking Dead Season 1 character tier list. So mate, let's just dump, dump, <laughs> jump straight in <laughs> with the first character, who is uh, Andy St. John, I believe. That's going to stay in the edit. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be completely uncut, so all errors are in. <laughs> I mean, like... We're gonna base this list off of whether we like them or not. Like, we could go for well written, but nah. Like, some get more limelight than others. It'll be a little unfair. Andy Saint John. I mean, like, he, yeah, he's a fucking cannibal, man. <laughs> I, I, I just, I guess we put him in D. I don't know. Like, I just can't justify putting him any higher. I think the only way he could be in C is C for cannibal. But I feel like that's just that's just a shit excuse to put him in C. I think yeah, he's got to be in the D for dickhead category. How is it she gonna say that? A great mind's thinking like <laughs> D for dickhead. Fuck you, Andy Saint John. Why are you being a dickhead for? Stop being a dickhead. Now Brenda, now now to be honest, she is the mum that condones this behaviour. Uh, she flirts with Larry, so she's got terrible taste. Uh, she spends about fucking four hours cooking a meal. I mean, admittedly, she's got to, like, mm. kill a human first, you know, prep that, leave the meat to rest, that kind of stuff. I get it, you're a chef. But regardless, you can probably pop in D as well, can't you? Yeah, she's certainly the most likeable of the St. John's. Isn't there a bit where, like, doesn't she make cookies or, like, she suggests that she's going to, like, make cookies for the kids or something like that? And you're like, oh, like, she can't be too bad. But then, yeah, I mean, she she literally cooks and eats people. So yeah. <laughs> I feel like she has to go in the D category. Should we put her better than Andy? I don't know. Like, she's the teacher, but, like... I think so. Like... I think she's better than Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we have yeah. Bree. Now, Bree's a bit of a nothing character. Uh, at least she's not accountable. Uh, we could put her in C for cancer. No, how did I say that? <laughs> That's really dark. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like, um... She is just a bit kind of like, oh, yeah. Doesn't she encourage Vernon to kill Lee at the start when he comes in, accidentally like roams into like you know the hidden group? Oh, you're testing my memory there. I'm really not sure. But the thing is, yeah, she doesn't stand out, does she? Like, she's one of them characters who, like, when she ultimately dies, you know, you're sort of like, oh, yeah, well, I sort of expected you to go. Yeah. So, yeah, like, she, she's certainly not B-worthy. So, yeah, I think C's a fair shout, mate. Yeah, okay. Oh, Carly. Oh, Carly, Carly. Carly. Carly's there. Hi, Carly. Liam's sweetheart when he was 16. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll let you lead with this, mate. Yeah, I mean, back when I was 16, she was the apple to my eye. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, I, I think she's a really good character. I think, like, other than the, uh, you know, the battery incident, which was just dumb, uh, <laughs> where she can't put batteries in a fucking radio, or she didn't even know they you know, didn't have any. Uh, I, I think she's a good character. She, You know, she's, like... She's good with a gun, she can defend herself, but she's quite quirky as well, you know? Like, she can actually snap back at people, she's not just really helpless. Uh, she's a really good ally for Lee, I feel like Lee and this group... You can throw out a Kenny a little bit, but, like, you're looking after this girl, and I think, like, Lee really liked having Carly around, and I feel like us as a player did as well. I'm willing to put her... I mean, if you asked me ages ago, I'd put her in S, but... I'm happy to put her in A, actually. I think A is a fair shout. How about you, mate? I'm going to say I do agree. I feel like she may have got into the S category had she lasted longer in yeah. the season. But I feel like because, I mean, I, I don't know about, obviously, the you know the person who's watching, but I know for both of us, she made it to episode three, right? Obviously, she can potentially die in episode one. But, um, yeah, like you say, there's that the, the potential romance angle with Lee. Um, I mean, she does somewhat. I'm pretty sure there's a scene in like episode one where she can like low key blackmail Lee. Um, but like otherwise, their relationship does develop. She does somewhat become like an ally, and she's always like that sort of calm head that you can go and talk to when sort of like shit's hitting the fan. But equally, she doesn't reach the heights. You know, of say a Kenny, for example, who, who, who uh, spoiler alert, I think I'm probably going to put in S category if it was for me, but 
I think, yeah, I think that A is probably fair, mate. Yeah, cool. Okay, let, let, let's put her in A for ally. Uh, and moving on, we've got, <laughs> we've got Krista. No, right, okay, seriously, chat, I mean, like, <laughs> like, why is he even <laughs> here? Like, I, I don't know what to say. His hands look like shovels. That is about as far as I can go for him. And if if I'm honest, props to whoever put this together for remembering Chet. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, I had to fucking, like, Google this guy. I had to fix I forgot what his name was. Um, but, yeah, like... I quite I like that it. he can be a zombie if, you know, you choose to go out at night other than day. Yeah. But that is literally it. Like, he, he's excited for Hot Dish Night. What more can you say? I feel like... I feel like he falls in C with Bree, and he's probably worse than Bree because he gets way less screen time. I think he would go yeah. about here. Yeah, because the, the thing is, like, you can't really put him in with the cannibals, can you? Because, like, he, at least he's likable. He helps you push a car and stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll go with uh, we'll go with C. All right, Chris is an interesting one because, like, I think off the bat, we it it's not subtle. We know her what she's hiding, it's clear as day that she's pregnant, right? Um, yeah. I feel like out between her and Omi, she's like the less likable of the two. She's a lot more serious. It gets to the point where you hit episode, the end of episode three and episode four, and being like a new mother, she just constantly questions you, like, oh, do you know what you're doing like, after like that little girl? And like, you've been, you've put up with that question for like the whole of season one, and then you're just like, oh, again, get off my fucking case. So, like, there were points where I did get really tired of her. Um, it's still, like, a fairly likeable character. It's, like, I, I like having her in a, the group. I think she can hold herself together pretty well. Um, I didn't like her at the start of Season 2 at all, though. Um, but, obviously, I think we're going just off Season 1, right? Actually, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. Shall we? Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I think... And she's in it for long, is she? Nah. She isn't in season two for long, is she? It's like one scene or something like that. But like, I mean, yeah, she she does become a little bit more personable and likable. No, I mean, I'm not saying she was too bad in season one, but certainly season two, she's in a different light because, you know, she's a mother at this point. Um, For me, mate, probably category C. Oh, okay, um, yeah, I, I was going to say B, C. but I think high C, maybe, like here. Yeah. Because... Christ, Krista. It has to be C, yeah. Of oh. Danny. I mean, the guy. <laughs> the guy's just fucking weird, isn't he? Like, the way he talks to his gun, the way yeah. he can shoot Jolie in the, in the face if you don't. Um, I almost feel bad because clearly, like, it's family influence and, like, he's, like, been taught into these ways of Andy and Brenda. But, like, I didn't really feel much remorse when he left the game, right? I, I feel he's got a fall with the other St. John's in D, surely. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I slammed a pitchfork into that guy's chest. Like, there, there was there was no forgiveness from me. I guess the question is, yeah, like, is he... I think that he's worse than Brenda, like, if you ask me. But, like, where is he worse than Andy? I think Andy almost is like the mastermind i feel like he has to go bottom like oh, yeah. I, I can see danny go in there to be honest slap him in the middle yeah yeah uh doug now doug's an interesting one he's basically level with carly but like you know they take each other's paths but one dies in episode one while the other makes it to episode three but still dies um it, like i feel like the decision comes down to do you want a romance story or do you want two sort of quirky things which help you group out him with a laser pen or him with a trip like alarm system so it's cool they gave doug mm. something but i just feel as a person who likes stories who likes writing i feel carly had the stronger one uh so like hey. i feel way way more people killed him off in episode one so i feel like less people know about him I could see him being a B character here. I don't know. How about you, mate? I was going to say B for bland. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like... But yeah, like, I feel... If I was basing this on just one playthrough, he would be probably lower. Um, 
not that he's like too unlike i mean there is that point isn't there where we covered this in the podcast it was it actually cracked me up when i was like revisiting it but like like when you're straight up like trying to like get i think he leaves having like this really serious moment where he's like having to kill like his as zombie brother um or his brother's this a zombie and you know the zombies they're completely occupied they're over by the tvs like it's all cool and then he just randomly shouts out and like shut the fuck up doug like you've now just got all this attention they're now gonna like swamp the drugstore because of you but um yeah like like you said though he does have the cool like little techie moments so i feel that elevates him to a b yeah yeah no i'd say so vernon yeah um I mean, the guy steals a boat and he undermines Lee's basically saying, look, you know, you, you can't really look after Clem, even though we've looked after her, you know, the entire way at this point. If it wasn't for us, Clem would be just zombie in a treehouse, let's face it. He goes behind your back, of course, but equally, I you know in my playthrough, I did go behind his back. I'm pretty sure you didn't, but I'm pretty sure that I lied to him in order to get him to give up the supplies to help the group um but he does ultimately steal the boat and fuck you over so i feel like you have to put him at the top of e is that controversial yeah i'd say so like because at the end of the day he, he turns villain like he's a part of that cancer survivor so like it's like yeah he's not crawford i like the guy he helps you out massively he goes out his way to help you through the sewer system to find your way back so he earns that respect, but at the end of the day, like, he betrays the other cancer survivors, doesn't he? His fate's unknown, he might yeah. be alive out there, he might be dead. I imagine he couldn't have survived by himself if he ran off with a bunch of supplies and an old man had to defend for himself. But yeah, like, man betrayed Morgan Freeman, you can't be doing that. So yeah, like, <laughs> I, I, I'd say yeah, he's a villain, he's got to go in D, and maybe better than a cannibal, because at least he helps us. Um, you know, and his intentions are good. It's just when it gets like, you know, push comes to shove, he, he turns his back on everyone. So yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, we've got Duck next. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the, the arc with him's interesting, right? Because like, I thought he was like an annoying little shit. Like, granted, he's just a kid, and let's face it, the kid's probably got some form of like learning disability or something. So like, I want to kind of, you know rein it in a little bit like he is just a kid um but like that whole scene with you know killing sean by being on the fucking track to running him over that's just irresponsible and like oh god like you know like he, he killed sean green for fuck's sake but when it comes to episode three and you get that whole detective scene with him where you get like the batman and robin and then there's that music going on and he's like you know looking for clues he becomes really lovable and it's really clever on the game's part because they make you like him right before they take us away from him. Um, <clears throat> if I had to put him somewhere, I'd say a high B above Duck. But yeah, how about you? I've got honestly nothing to add on that because you've literally taken the words out of my mouth, mate. So yeah, high B above Doug. Glenn. Um, I find Glenn a little bit forgettable, if I'm honest. Um, isn't he part of the actual TV series as well? He is, isn't he's a like very big part. He's one of the main characters. Yeah. Uh... He, he just basically ups and leaves in episode one, doesn't he? Yeah. And, um, apart from finding the guy, like, hidden in bins, like, I generally can't think that much on Glenn, like, of what he actually brings to the table. Obviously, he's not dislikable, so I wouldn't be necessarily putting him in E. But I feel like he's probably C category, and then it's just a matter of where. What do you think? I was going to say the same. I was going to put him below Krista, but above Bray. Because the thing is with Glenn is that, like, I really do enjoy that line where it's, you know, he's talking to Irene. He's like, you have a girlfriend? Or you have a boyfriend, sorry? So, like, um, <laughs> I, that was a really funny line that really actually did make me chuckle. So he gets brownie points for that. But, yeah, like... I feel like, I mean, this is a whole other separate video discussion, but the moment you take a real licensed show like The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones and you introduce characters from the show in it, and it, the same will go for Herschel in a minute, um, you can't kill them off so you know they've got plot armour and they have to survive. 
and there's the limited things you can do. We saw it in the Game of Thrones game with Jon Snow, Tyrion, Cersei. So yeah, I feel like that is at his demise, you know, like that is a flaw, you know, and he can't get any higher. So I think the fairest place to put him would be right here. Ben, B for Bellend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know what, like, in terms of likability, um, the, see, the thing is, he is a traitor, isn't he? But then you've got the whole argument that he is a 16 year old kid and you can understand where he's coming from because he was giving supplies to them not because he was secretly working with them but because he was trying to protect the group so his reasoning was in a good place but of course do you know what i mean it was the, it was the deception behind everybody else that just made it so bad and of course because it ultimately led to the death of um a duck and uh What's her face? Katya. What's Kenny's wife called? Tatcha, yeah. Um, you know, he, he does hang a lot. You know, he does rest on his shoulders quite a bit. So, he's a bit of a weird one. Um, I'm struggling with this one, mate. I feel like I'm going to need your help with it. Yeah, I, I mean, the, with Ben, it's interesting because, yeah, like, a lot of people forget he is a kid. He's still in high school. Um, I love his speech in episode 5 uh, which we yeah, I didn't get in my blind play for I dropped the guy but um, yes I... yeah, so it's one of those right where I, I think he is actually a really well written character of what it's like for like some you know a teen to be in that boat but I just feel if I was in his shoes I would have approached Lee or Lily and been like look here's the deal the bandits came up to me we have to escape in the night you know and it might have swayed Lily's decision to get out of there but another thing, you know, to play devil's advocate against the guy is not only does it kill Catcher and Duck, but it leads to Lily's mental breakdown. It kills Carly or Doug off. It completely tears your group. And oh yeah. So like it, it mm. it's really bad, isn't it? So I feel like, but because you know he is a kid, I'm willing to put him like in B to be honest. And I think maybe, maybe like between no, then... yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, because it's it's likable, but like it's heart, like you say, his heart's in the right place, isn't it? But it it, it kills, you know, my girlfriend, my my ex, uh, you know, <laughs> and you know the guy the guy made me a widow, so it's unforgivable. You took everything from me. Herschel, Herschel. he is like Glenn. He's in the show, so we knew. Like, if you're a Walking Dead fan, you know he can't die. He only gets like a few like scenes at the start and his whole thing is just to kind of like really amp up that whole theme of oh is Lee a good like father for Clementine because he's an escaped criminal convict or whatever. Um, so yeah there's not really much going on there he's just a bit of a moody git really. I love his line get the fuck mm. out of here but other than that I think he's probably like low C rank right? Yeah I think so I think you've pretty much covered him I mean sympathetic angle on the fact that his son dies you know these people rock up and then he loses his son as a result yeah um i think yeah above like chet, he just doesn't have enough above chet probably yeah not above I've... brie because at least brie's like nice she helps you like get around crawford right yeah no i agree mate catcher the catcher's interesting because she's obviously i feel like her whole theme right is that she's too nice for the world so she quits because she doesn't like the idea yeah. of people having guns. She can't hack it. Like, the moment her son's dying, she's like, well, I don't like the way my husband's become. I don't want to be her. So, like, it's she's actually quite an interesting character. I really like her. But she is a little dull as well, right? She's just, like, a Belgian mm. vet. There's nothing really beyond that. I think that she probably... Like, if I had to put her on the list, I'd say above Glenn, below Krista as a C character. Really? Yeah, what were you thinking? I was gonna say maybe like a low B, because I think Doug, like Doug's in B, and I feel like Catcher gets a bit more than Doug. Yeah. So like, okay, I I could go with that. Maybe like below Ben. I don't know. I'm trying to think of other things. I mean, yeah, obviously she has the moment. You have a couple of dialogues with her, don't you? Like you say, where she's like, "Oh, I don't like what's happened to Kenny." Feel sorry for her. 
Yeah, like I feel like what what did you say, mate? You said somewhere in C, wasn't it? I was thinking like a high C, maybe like below Krista, but it because the thing is though, we're basing our list actually on who we like, right? Like if it's well written, yeah. she she would go quite low, but. Yeah, I'd put her in B, actually, now, now that I've been remembered the theme of this list. Kenny, my boy, I think he's got to go in S. Um, well, actually, oh, fuck, I actually know what. Rewind. <laughs> Maybe not. This is to do with likability. Um, yeah, like, you know, honestly, like you just said, if this was terms of well-written, I think, yeah, Kenny's up there in S. Like, he goes through such a emotional arc like you see the guy at his best you see the guy at his worst he's you know he's got so much loss you know he's played with loss throughout the uh throughout season one and even into season two but then again you have this whole thing of likability now in my playthrough i did like kenny um certainly flawed but then who isn't um, but there are a couple of things that you're like, oh, I know, like, you, you, even at the barn door, when he says to Lee, like, oh, yeah, you're urban, like, you can pick locks, like, oh, like, you, 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 do you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's a big mark against him. Um, of course, there's a point you raised as well, how he's actually quite reckless at times, like, he can just put his family first, which, you know, is completely understandable, but at the same time, you're in an apocalypse, you know, people, it's life and death, people can die, so, I'm gonna say, oh, it's, he's not as likeable as Carly, really, is he? So I think he has to go at least below Carly, if he was to go in A, but then, I don't know, like, I'm looking at the B list now, and I'm like, you know, surely Duck's more likeable than him. Surely Doug is. Oh, I feel like he might be me. This is so weird, yeah. Yeah, Kenny could literally... He's going to be S for people. He's going to be D for people. Like, there's no right yeah. answer to Kenny. And that is the beauty of him. If, like, you say we were doing it on best written character, he would be up there in S because he is a really fascinating guy of someone who deals with loss. And in my opinion... Him dying at the end of season two is a really fitting finale for him because it's almost like you see the monster he's become and he's a nice guy but you want to put him out and then you have a nice word with him and he's like, yeah, you made the right call when you kill him. So I really like his whole story. But yeah, like, there's just certain things he does that are really unforgivable. Like, I think if we were in his shoes and we were protecting a family, a family man will put his family first and he will be reckless. He will kind of you know make some rash decisions to make that happen there, there are just a few things right like dropping the salt lick on a man's head i get the safety reason but like you know there's a little girl in the yeah. room there was that dad's daughter in the room and it's like mate what are you doing so yeah i i can vouch for a below carly um you know i think that's quite reasonable of you being you know such a kenny person i i just was like Thinking like, yeah, I'll accept you putting him in S, but I think that's a very, very reasonable spot. But like we say, if it was well, well written, he'd be, he'd be higher. But yeah, like you've got to tone him down a little bit for likability reasons because he's a great character, right? He's not just like you know a perfect person who goes up in an S. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I feel like with Kenny as well, he runs through the entire season. So like on paper, would you say that like Catcher is more likable than Kenny? You probably would. The thing is that Catcher dies in episode three. Kenny runs all the way to five. So even with this whole like, likability spectrum, you've got to almost judge it on the amount of time you spend with them, how deep they are, like or how you know how much depth there is to the character. And yeah, I also feel that with likability though, like survival does buy into that because you want a good team. And at yeah. the end of the day, Catcher's just kind of like she's a vet. She tries to heal. She's a good person, but. Kenny is the man who lifts you up when you get your lights knocked out in the drugstore when the zombies invade, right? So there still is that redeeming quality with Kenny. Yeah, he's there at your side when you have to go get supplies and stuff. So, yeah, I think a low Carly, I think, is perhaps fair. Right, we go over to Larry now. Now, the man's <laughs> a racist. He yeah. punches your lights out so you get eaten by zombies. He basically like just wants all the food you know it's just he's written to be a dick there's no two ways about it 
If you are out there and you like Larry, get your head checked. Unsubscribe, you're not welcome on the channel. Um, <laughs> the only like <laughs> redeeming quality th thing I can think of really is that he has the axe and he can actually save you from like the zombified you know, teacher or Travis or whatever. Uh, but other than that, there's just nothing really going for him, is there? No, he obviously loves his daughter Lily, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, even when you give food to him, you know that bit where, where you're like put in charge to like ration out the food? Yeah. Wasn't it you that told me that even if you give food to him, he still treats you like shit or he'll just take it off you and then go back to like you know fixing the fence or whatever yeah 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 like he's ungrateful yeah like you say he's racist he just he w he's willing to throw a child out to a zombie horde <laughs> that that as well uh, <laughs> pretty big thing <laughs> he's not in at the very start so he's he's got to be in the d category isn't he the d for dickhead category yeah and even when lily tries to paint him in a good light he's flirting with brenda who ends up being a cannibal so that is <laughs> I feel, yeah. um, you know what, like, uh, I mean, you're probably putting cannibals at the bottom because at least when Larry goes against, you know, finds out they're traitors, he is still on your side, you know, he's like, oh yeah, we have to get out. So yeah. maybe above these guys, yeah. but yeah. I don't know, above Vernon, I think maybe that's... because he doesn't betray the group, Vernon does. Mind you, Ooh. no, he does betray you because he punches your light out, I reckon. Leaves you for dead. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, he's got to be above Vernon. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. Lee Everett, mate. Now, it's, it's difficult, right, because I feel like when you rate a main character, main characters for me are often designed with a fair air of, like, blank canvas, allowing the player to imagine themselves as that character. So, like, what do we know about Lee? He's a teacher, he likes history, he's an escaped convict. Other than that, there's not too much. So, like, mm -hmm. he, he's nice. Like, obviously, he probably could end up in the S category here, mate. Like, I don't know, what are you thinking here? Yeah, I mean, again, it, I suppose the first thing that comes to mind, are we going to judge the man that we see in the game, or are we going to judge also his background? Um, obviously, he is a killer, isn't he? So, but that's a whole other argument. If uh, you know, if if you came home to a cheating wife, would you kill? Like a lot of people probably would. So like a lot of people would snap in that moment. Yeah, Could, should we forgive Lee Everett? There's another video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just pop it up. Know, like, it's difficult. I feel like I can't really rate him because I feel Lee is me. I feel like he is the player. So I feel like it's like. You know, how are you supposed to judge that? I almost think I could put him in the S category, but it's almost like a weak shout. Yeah. Let's just, yeah, let's just throw him in S. Cool. A fan service. Okay, Lily. Now, oh god, that is another interesting one, because, like, episode one, it's, like, back and forth, because it's, like, oh, she's, like kind of with Larry, like, maybe we should throw this kid out. We've got too many mouths to feed. These people have to leave, go out with the zombies. So it's like, whoa, this lady's horrible. But then, like, you get the medication for Larry and she's really nice to you. And then it's the whole thing with Kenny, where if you actually pick Lily and you side with her, she has your back. And she is actually a really good ally. But because of Ben's actions, she has a mental breakdown and just completely snaps killing Doug or Carly or whatever and she ends up being quite villainous and you know she's like basically the big bad as we say in later seasons so it is difficult because there's different lilies how are we supposed to judge her I don't know if you've got anything to comment on there mate yeah I mean plug part two uh check out our Kenny versus Lily debate because I feel like a lot of what we say now is going to be uh, relevant, of course. But, um, yeah, it's true. The thing is, I overall have a negative view on her. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, the main reason being is obviously she kills Carly slash Doug. She ultimately steals the RV van if you don't, um, you know, if you don't take her with you. I know we're not judging it on season four, but we obviously know that she goes on a bit of a villainous arc 
even when you first meet her, like she's like not even like she's like behind Larry in terms of like chucking people out of the drugstore into the thing. So like she does have good things about her, as you said, she's leader in her own right. She's willing to make hard decisions for like rationing food and stuff like that. But in terms of likability, um, I'm looking at the bottom two categories. If I'm honest, mate, potentially even the D category. Maybe yeah. Like I feel D. what's interesting as well with the whole Lily and Kenny debate is that because we very much kept it season one, but if you look at um, it in the later seasons, I feel like Kenny and Lily almost have the same where they both go mad and break down. But the only difference is, is that like Kenny's happens way later. His is like a lot more gradual and it takes a lot more loss. Uh, Lily's mm. obviously a lot, uh, you know, like... Uh, how do I say? She's just like, she has, yeah, she's more reactive, right? So yeah, like I feel like if this is likability, she loses all of it, and we have to judge that. So um, I would say that there's moments where she's here, but all in all, she becomes evil as fuck. Um, I feel like I do want to take the good stuff into consideration, though. So I feel like because she leads the group. I kind of want to put her like C, maybe like above, like here. But that's as a balance. There's times where she's here, the worst character, and there's times where she's here in A. And I feel like smack bang in C is probably a good place. Because at the end of the day, she led the group. Like that is a, that is no tall order there. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I feel like it's probably C. I mean, if you're literally doing it for likability, she would be in the D category. But a lot of the characters below her are not in it as long as her. So I'm trying to be fair in terms of weighing up. Yeah, that's it. Because it's like, spent. you've got Larry for two episodes where he's a dick the whole time. And we get Lily for like three episodes where she's great, then she's horrible, then she's great. So it's like, it's tough to balance it, you know. There's almost like three versions of Lily and they all fall into different categories, right? But yeah, like yeah. Uh, maybe we'll keep her in C, but should we move her down the pecking order? Because obviously less likable than Glenn towards the end. Maybe like here, like I don't know. I was gonna say, like if I was to put her anywhere, I'd put her at the end of C. So the fact you've put her at the top of C, I think somewhere slap bang in the middle was a compromise, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's completely fair. I really like Mark. I think we could potentially get. Well, I think I was gonna say make him an S. But then he's literally in it for like, what, half an episode in the entire thing. But I really like Mark. I feel like he's literally perhaps the ally, like he's your bro that you could pretty much rely on. Like, you know where we were saying with Kenny earlier, he's like your right hand man. He is, but we know that he's got that you know, chink in his armour. He's got something in him where he can flip out and you can't always depend on him. Mark is more like the level headed ally that's gonna be there that's gonna support you that's you know always there for a chat and stuff so i don't know like i've got high opinions of him so i feel like i'd probably put him in the a category but i know that i'm breaking my own rule here because he's only in it for like half an episode so it might be a bit unfair so what do you think mate i was thinking low a high b above duck or below kenny so pretty much same as you because what i like about mark is like you say he's almost that bro that companion like that just that bromance that lee almost needed um he's pretty shoddy with an axe like he struggles to save you kind of thing and has to rely on carly or larry to bail him out uh, one other thing i really like about mark is that even when he's a zombie he still has your back and helps you kill brenda right so like it's even like cool. beyond the grave the guy's there for you yeah so, like i think we can put him here like the guy's awesome like i was gonna say honestly if if he was in it for like the entire season or the vast majority of it i'll be putting up him up in s but I feel like we've got to yeah. keep in mind the time spent. So yeah, I think, yeah. It's like, low like ability is high, writing is probably low, but this is like yeah. ability, so he has to come high. Now, we move on to Molly. Now, I am quite the Molly fan. She, like Mark, is also only in it for one episode. She is the outsider that hates Crawford, so she's lawful, her morals are good. I mean, maybe not lawful, but... She, she hates what Crawford stands for, so there's brownie points there. 
Um, mm-hmm. She's gone through quite a tragic story. Um, Survival-wise, she's brilliant. She can fight. Um, it was almost like I was really excited because it's almost like they took that like almost Assassin's Creed trend at the time and threw it into Walking Dead for an episode where we got this like hooded, agile character with a cool weapon. So yeah, I really like Molly, mate. And we're going on like ability, like. Probably won't go to S because, like, at the end of the day, she's in it for herself. She's like, I, I can't, this group seems chaotic. I don't think I can be a part of it. And I think she's right. I think she bailed at a really clever time. And I think she's, like, a really smart character to the point where, like, yeah, she was right to get out of there. So I can see, I, I maybe this is me, like, being way too generous here, mate. But I think she is level with Mark. I could probably put her as a low A. I think, yeah, she's definitely an A and B, isn't she? I'm literally trying to run through that. Doesn't she have that sort of angle as well? Sympathetic angle when you find that, like, videotape of that doctor. Like, she's pregnant, isn't she? Oh, uh... Doctor or something, that dodgy doctor in the... Yeah, because her sister is diabetic, so has to basically sleep with the doctor to get diabetic medicine. Uh... Otherwise, it's her sister, not her. Yeah, so she basically, oh, right, yeah, yeah, like, or, like, her sister gets, like, kicked out because of this doctor, so she has this revenge side to her as well. And, of course, we obviously, she we know that she kills him. Um, so, do you reckon that changes anything for you? Or are you like, no, nah, that's just... Nah, the doctor's yeah. a fucking rapist. Good on Molly. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I'm agreed, mate. But yeah, like, I feel, yeah, less whacker in that A category. Yeah. You know what, an interesting thing with Molly as well is that, again, I'm trying to think back to an earlier video, but I swear that um, he basically wanted to have her back in season two and have her as, like, the Jane character. Because they are very similar, aren't they? Yeah. In some ways, with, like, the way they, you know, sort of, like, the skill in taking out a zombie and such. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, like, uh, I've got a really cool theory that I'll bank for another time. But yeah, I love Molly and I think they could have used her again. But probably good they didn't in case they ended up butchering the writing. I'm going to put her below Mark. I prefer her to Mark. because, But that's probably a writing point of view. I think we're going for likability. Mark's more of a team player when Molly, like, you know, is raiding, like, you know, the house in season four. Because she's a thief as well. So I feel like we have to put her below Mark. But yeah, I think that's a good spot. So we got Omid next. I mean, I like Omid. He's got sort of like a light sense of humour. What I would say, I mean, he's a little bit forgettable. I mean, we are basing this on likability. So the thing is, I don't think he reaches the top two categories. So I think we're maybe looking at like a B category person here, mate. I don't know about you. I was going to say high B above Duck because Duck kills Sean. Um, so I, I kind of want to put him above Duck. But yeah, like I feel like he's got that history link with Lee. They both like the same stuff. He's light-hearted. He has like, you know, the group's interest in mind. He clearly is a very loving like boyfriend or husband. I can't quite remember to Krista. So yeah, like yeah, above Duck, should we say? Yeah. Non-playable character. Get him out of the game. Yeah. Kill him off. Is it, is, is it Trevor? I want to say his name's Trevor. Nah, uh, Travis is the kid, but this guy, I think it's David. David. Christ almighty, you'd think I hadn't played the game. But yeah, um, David then, I mean... <laughs> I feel I mean, I, he's I, a nothing character, him. but like ability, so he has to go here. But he's like, like a Chet, isn't he? Yeah, he's like a Chet, but of episode two. Yeah, like I feel... Um, He's got to fall above these two because, like, he doesn't do anything bad, per se. He's just the poor guy who got his legs stuck. Uh, probably, I don't know, there. Because at least Brie helps yeah. with stuff. There's not much to comment on. I think by this logic as well, though, I kind of want to put Chet here, though, mate. Because, like, he's nice while these two do bad shit, so... By the same token, should we just skip and quickly put Travis in next to him, then? Or do you reckon yeah. Travis has not got a... I'd put Travis Doesn't below do David no. because, like, um, I, the guy's, he has the worst F of the game. He's a fucking dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he can turn into a zombie and attack you, so we're going to blame that on him as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and even, again, mate, Sean, like, 
he falls here because he's a nothing character. He has Lee's back kind of thing, right? But, like, I'd say probably about here because, like, I mean, maybe here because he does bring you back to the farmhouse. So he, he sort of saves you, actually, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. But other than yeah. that, like, what what is there? Like, literally nothing. No, he's, he's busy working away on the fence, isn't he? Um, of a handyman. No, there's nothing else to Sean. So I think I think that's about right. Um, now the stranger, uh, I, he's got to be probably S category, right? He's the most relatable character. He keeps a, a head in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, ugh, literally a kidnapper. Um, he, 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 it's literally, I mean, it's obvious what category he goes into. It's yeah. a case of where. So, is he worse than the cannibals? No. Not in my opinion. But he's probably, certainly worse than Vernon. I mean, he steals a kid, Vernon steals a boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you just toss up between him and Larry, isn't it? So keeps dead wife's head in a bag i feel like his <laughs> anger i get is somewhat justified because you know your actions lead to the to the demise of his family but him kidnapping clem leads to lee getting bit leads to the wild goose chase over the rooftops which can potentially will kill ben uh and potentially like you know leads you to believe kenny dies as well right so his actions really fuck your group up. Um, and, yeah, like, I mean, I could argue that he falls at the bottom, mate. But I, for the sake, yeah, I agree, there's the cannibalism. He could pre fall anyway, there's a strong case. But at least Larry's yeah. on your group, he's not. He kidnaps Clem. Uh, I loved watch, watching him get strangled. So, yeah, let's put him there. Yeah. Yeah. Happy with that. All right, well, what can we say about the cop, mate? Like, probably with the <laughs> other guys as well, right? Like, he, he's a bit snarky, a few of his comments. He's just a nothing character, right? Like, probably, I don't know, like, at least Chet, like, is nice to Clem. That's all, like, I, I, he probably goes there, mate. I can't really put him any... I, I just, no, but there's nothing. He's just doing his job, isn't he? I he mean, is. could have been looking at the road a bit better. Yeah. You know, but, um... Yeah, you can't hold too much with the guy. He's just doing his job, dropping Lee off, you know, taking him to jail, whatever. So, yeah. If I See. was getting arrested, though, I wouldn't appreciate someone who's being really chatty and sarky, though. So, like, yeah, I thought he was a bit of a dick for doing that. But otherwise, yeah, I think we'll put him there. Like you say, he's just doing his job. Yeah. Our finale, we're ending on the girl that we have to protect the whole time. I'll let you kick it off, mate. She's worse than the cannibals. Yeah, um, if it wasn't for her, like, do you know what I mean? Like, Lee wouldn't have died. So, there we go, guys. That's the tier list for Walking Dead Season 1 now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, Clem, likability. I mean, I'm trying to think of things where you can't like her. Can you think of any? Uh, I guess, like, it's... It's narrow, but you could argue like her running through like the doorway without your consent could get her in danger. Um, you know, in episode four at the start when she runs into the mansion. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, nah. Like at the end of the day, she's what eight turns nine throughout the game. She's um, you know, her parents are missing. She's hiding in a treehouse. Like, I I just think she's adorable. Like you're obviously tasked with protecting her. And, like, you really, you thinking you're playing as Lee, right, it really gives you that sense, like, you have your own daughter that you've got to protect. I love the interactions, yeah. watching her, like, you know, colour with the crayons at the motel, teaching her how to shoot a gun, doing the little haircut. I honestly think she's just the absolute golden girl of the series, and I think she's at the top of S here, mate. I, I would put her above Lee, like... How about yeah. you? Yeah, no, I agree. You know what? I, I, my favourite scene of Clem um, in like season one, it's got to be the bit where like you're in, you go into the barn and um, it's the whole salt lick thing. Yeah. 
And she goes, that doesn't taste like salt. And I was like, oh, this Lee just says something like, wait, did you lick it? And then it, the camera just pans to her and she just all stood there like looking awkwardly. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I love the one as well where it's like, oh, Duck keeps saying I put a bug under his pillow. And I think Lee's like, well, did you? Yeah, maybe or something. <laughs> <I'm a bit laughs> yeah. Like, that's the thing as well. She's not just this helpless little girl that like we just have to protect because she's a child she has quirks to her she's adorable she's funny and then above that season one she's not just to help this girl she actually has arc where she begins to survive you teach her how to shoot a gun in episode three but in episode four she saves you by shooting you know like saves molly i think it is um so like and then she has the loss at the end and it tees her up for the whole season i think her writing is brilliant, and I know it's done on this list is for likability, but that as well, I think, I think she's incredible. I just think, like, you can't hate her. She's just, like, everyone's daughter in 2012, and I really wanted to protect her with every fibre in my being. So, yeah, I think she just has to be the top of S. I think she's just the best character in the game for likability. Well, there we go, guys. I mean, that is our Walking Dead Season 1 character tier list. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Is there any there that you disagree with, agree with? Of course, give us all your comments. And uh, before too long, we'll be moving on to Walking Dead Season 2. So uh, do look out for that in the future. And of course, other Telltale videos. Have you got anything else to add, mate? Uh, nah, just I'll put the tier list maker in the description if you want to have a go yourselves, guys. So uh, thank you very much for joining. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.